Good afternoon. This is Marshall Davis. It's another beautiful day here in New Hampshire. I spent the morning working in my vegetable garden doing some hoeing and fertilizing and uh, the friend of mine that lets the farmer, a friend of mine who lets me use some of his land actually uh, harvested some spinach for me today and gave some to me so that'll be the first of the locally grown uh, uh, vegetables that we'll be having tonight so I'm happy about having done that and having the gardening season upon me and uh, I thought I'd, I would uh, do another episode on Christian non-duality this afternoon and this particular one is about the the gospel of Jesus and how it differs from the gospel about Jesus uh, there was more than one gospel proclaimed by the early church. Uh, there is a common misunderstanding among Christians today that the early Christianity was a homogenous movement, that there was a, a pure gospel once for all delivered to the saints and that all the early Christians agreed upon this and it is represented by the books in the New Testament that we have today. But nothing could be further from the truth. History is never that simple. Biblical scholars are well aware of a host of early Christian movements and alternative scriptures that were circulating in the earliest decades and centuries of Christianity, all claiming to be the original gospel preached by Jesus and the original 12 apostles. The truth is that Christianity as we know it today, with all of its creeds and doctrines and rituals and rules and ethics, did not originate with Jesus. Christianity was not founded by Christ. It was founded by the Apostle Paul, with help from a few other anonymous writers of New Testament books. The Apostle Paul's Gospel was one of many Gospels that call themselves Christian. It just so happened that Paul's Gospel beat out all the others to become what is known today as Christianity and all the losers were labeled heresy. The Gospel that the Church preaches today about being saved by grace through faith in the only begotten Son of God, the crucified and risen Savior, was not the Gospel that Jesus preached. Furthermore, you will not find the doctrines that are deemed so essential to Christianity today. Doctrines like the Incarnation and the Virgin Birth and the Trinity and the Atonement and all the rest, you will not find them in Jesus' teachings as recorded in the Gospels. All you have to do is read for yourself a, a red letter Bible. That's one that puts all the words of Jesus in red. Just read the red words and you will not find any of those teachings in the words of Jesus. That gospel was created and preached by the Apostle Paul and others in the early Christian centuries. That fact is obvious to anyone who will just take some time to compare what Jesus said in the gospels to what is taught in the rest of the New Testament in the epistles. There's virtually no similarity between the, the two messages. Paul prides himself on the fact that the gospel that he preached was not given to him by the historical Jesus or Jesus' apostles. He does not hide that fact at all. In fact, he boasts in it. He insists that his gospel was given to him directly by revelation from the glorified and ascended Christ himself. That, by the way, sounds a lot like Joseph Smith and the beginnings of Mormonism, or for that matter, Muhammad and the beginnings of Islam. Paul asserts that after his conversion on the Damascus Road, that he did not consult any of Jesus' apostles to see if he got the gist of the divine revelation right. In fact, he writes in Galatians, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. 
I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. And then he goes on. But when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me, so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, my immediate, immediate response was not to consult any human being. I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went into Arabia. Later I returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas, who is Peter, and stayed with him 15 days. I saw none of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. I assure you before God that what I am writing to you is no lie, he says. Not only was Paul's gospel of a different origin than the apostles' gospel, he seems to have been at odds with the original disciples of Jesus. He writes to the Corinthians, For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, if you receive a spirit, a different spirit from the spirit that you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. I do not think I am the least inferior to the most eminent apostles. I may indeed be untrained as a speaker, but I do have knowledge. Now these eminent apostles, or as the New International Version translates it, super apostles that he mentions here, are most likely the original twelve chosen by, by Jesus. Paul was at odds with them. The author of the Acts of the Apostles, who is, which is attributed to Paul's friend and traveling companion, Luke, the physician, tries to downplay these differences between the, the leaders of the Jerusalem church and Paul. But what else could you expect from someone in Paul's circle of close friends? But the message still comes across in Acts that there was serious tension between the two camps. In fact, the battle between Paul's gospel and the other gospels that were being preached got nasty very quickly. In what might be the earliest book of the New Testament, this letter to the Galatians, Paul writes this, Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to, to you, let them be under God's curse. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. Wow. Early Christianity was a battlefield of gospels and ideas. But in the end, Paul's gospel won the war. The church today is the descendant of the Pauline church. But Paul's gospel was not Jesus' gospel. Paul never met Jesus, never heard him preach, did not follow him during Jesus' lifetime. That was supposed to be one of the qualifications for being an apostle. But he was never appointed as an apostle by the Twelve. He just claimed that title for himself, claiming to be appointed directly by the risen and ascended Christ. Again, much like Joseph Smith and Mormonism. Later, according to Acts, the Antioch church sent him and Barnabas on a preaching mission. There was no evidence that Paul was familiar with any of Jesus' teachings. He never quotes Jesus in any of his letters, with the one exception of the words of institution of the Lord's Supper. There is one saying of Jesus that Paul quotes in the book of Acts, that it's better to give than to receive, but that saying is not found in the four Gospels, so who knows where that came from. Paul's Gospel was not the Gospel of Jesus. It was a Gospel about Jesus that he made up. His Gospel became the core 
of the Christian message. That is why I say that Paul was the founder of Christianity. What was Paul's gospel? He put it this way. He said, we preach Christ crucified. His message was not the teachings of Jesus, but the death of Jesus and what it meant. He interprets Jesus' death as a sin offering, an atonement for sin that fulfilled the Old Testament sacrificial system and saves us. That is Paul's gospel in a nutshell. Now there are, of course, a lot of other elements of it, important elements of his gospel, like the role of grace and faith and works and all that, but the, its center is the cross. Jesus preached the kingdom of God. Now don't misunderstand me. I am not dismissing traditional Christianity wholesale. I am a Christian. I'm not saying that there's not profound truth in Paul's writings or in all the traditional doctrines of historic Christianity. Certainly there is. The cross and the resurrection point to profound spiritual realities, and I have spoken about them in other episodes, and I will speak about them again in the future, I'm sure. I find value in them. What I am saying is that this was not Jesus' gospel. And if we are followers of Jesus, it seems like we ought to listen to him first and foremost. You know, I'm a follower of Jesus, not Paul. Jesus preached the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a life-changing, transformative reality that Jesus became aware of at his baptism. At that moment, he was anointed the Christ, and he became aware of his true identity. And he immediately went out and began to proclaim this kingdom awareness. We can have this transformative seeing that Jesus had. Christ consciousness, unitive awareness, union with God, knowing that we are sons and daughters of God. This is what Jesus knew and what Jesus proclaimed. He called it the kingdom of God. And if we are to call ourselves Christians and not Paulians, then maybe we ought to listen to the gospel of Jesus at least as much as we listen to the gospel about Jesus. That's it for today. Grace and peace to you.